go through it uh, more practically than theoretically okay uh, endometriosis uh, is something it's a chronic as yes, you know it's a chronic information some studies have shown up to 10% of the general population have endometriosis and maybe little exaggerated uh, 50% of the infertile women have endometriosis okay so uh, coming to uh, if, do you want if you want to understand you should understand little pathophysiology i will not go into the details see when you see the pathophysiology you have a impaired molecular function you have the impaired molecular function and impaired immunological function so the impaired molecular function means the increased production of estrogen estradiol pro increase in pro inflammatory markers like cytokines prostaglandins and metalloproteins and on the other side there is an impaired immunological function that failure of the immune cells to suppress and clear the inflammatory response so it's a basic thing so what is why there is pain okay the pain is the main see usually we all know endometriosis presentation is very simple either with pain or with infertility this is what we commonly see so pain what is the reason that is main reason is due to increase in inflammatory mediators like macrophages pro inflammatory interleukin enf alpha and the uh, in endometrial lesions so we in net if you see there is increased production of prostaglandin plus a chronic inflammation so this is what we are dealing so underlying mechanism there is an exaggerated inflammatory response excess production of estrogen and there is a progesterone resistance okay. this slide is very important to know that about the drugs so elevated vgf causing angiogenesis abnormal mental protein causing progesterone resistance and neovascularization there is over expression of aromatase estradiol and pg2 and abnormal apoptosis and enhanced peristonian nk cell activity this is a very important slide if you want to understand the pathophysiology we directly go into the category of drugs we use drugs for different drugs certain drugs can give only analgesia that is nsaids certain drugs are used to suppress our estrogen so age old teaching see even with a postgraduate or teaching endometriosis the culprit is estrogen so the estrogen suppression has been studied so different drugs in that group was there you can use contraceptive pills or a high dose progestogens you can use gnrh agonist or antagonist with adback or without danazol which was an etol did come to it gestrinol these are all the ovulation suppression okay or estrogen suppression there are drugs which we plan to have a direct action on the deposits that includes lng ius selective progesterone receptor modulators selective estrogen receptor modulators aromatase inhibitors estrogen receptor ligands angiogenesis inhibitors and statins so this will come to it after some time so the we will directly deal with most important drugs like cocs progestogens anti progestogens uh, gnrh agonists and aromatase inhibitors first i have to tell about nsaids okay see we have both cox1 and cox2 enzymes promote synthesis of prostaglandins and involved in this an old we all know the biochemistry that these are the uh, uh, cox2 and 1 and 2 enzymes involved in the pain and inflammation or both endometrial tissue expresses there is a specific thing cox2 okay you should see remember that specifically at a greater level than the utopic endometrium so nsaids are the first line therapy we all use pain then nsaids are bn given for chronic pelvic pain or suspected or a known case of endometriosis pain but the problem you should understand the nsaids which we have that ibuprofen naproxen nifenamic acid ketoprofen are selectively non selectively inhibits cox1 and cox2 that is why the efficiency is less that is why we are not getting that efficiency to suppress the endometriosis so why cox2 is not use inhibitors are not use is very simple uh, due to cvs risk at a long term use of selective cox2 inhibitors there are they are used at a lowest we want to use it at lowest possible dose and the shortest duration it is not possible for an endometriosis coming to cosis estrogen plus progesterone it is used as the initial treatment of pain so you should understand even any group it is used as the initial treatment Me mechanism of action we all know mode of action inhibit gonadotropin release decrease menstrual flow and desudelize the implant okay can be used as cyclical regime or continuously without a break of or withdrawal menses you can use the both ways okay continuous regime decrease the frequency of painful menses and improves uh, chronic pelvic pain so that is a preferred if the patient is having dysmenorrhea that the preferred way is a continuous regime so and uh, most of the time it's a monophasic cocs are preferred 
and lodos not so pithy you a previous concept was that there was a concept which uh, contraceptive pill has to be used coc has to be used low dose or high dose both has its own problems high dose then it used for a long time has problems due to estrogen but uh, low dose uh, pills not superior to conventional dose but lower dose may lead to higher rate of breakthrough bleeding so if you use lower dose it has a breakthrough bleeding if you higher dose it has other complications so you have to balance uh, according to it. but as such effect is same low dose or high dose so many people prefer to use low dose because of the complications of estrogen coming to progestin progestins can initial displacement and subsequent endometrial atrophy is the principle so what for example an rct compared they compared high dose old study amp metroxy progesterone as they daily for 6 months with a placebo and the second look laparoscopy was done they found that 60% resolution while uh, 80 18% only was it placebo so naturally it is effective they found that was how it was found and now coming to metroxib on oral doses has to be very high you want to give 20 to 100 you have to give it or given daily but so then problems of acne weight gain regular bleeding all these problems starts norethisteron or norethidron as a treat in this case we we know we, it can be there is they say that they can get up to 90% reduction the problem here is 5 mg daily that may not dose may not be enough so or gradually we every day you increase to 0.5 mg like that you can increase till amenorrhea is attained and the maximum dose but you can that is also a big and you can you know that 20 mg tolerability for the patient is very difficult daily and this is used as an adjunct therapy but it's very effective as an adjunct therapy with gnrh okay when you give it to prevent uh, bone mineral loss coming to the, our favorite drug dinogest okay it is it has shown significant reduction in endometriosis of pain when it is given daily for uh, 2 mg daily and the efficiency all studies have shown it is as efficient as equivalent to gnrh agonist when you see is uh, the dinogest action if you see it acts on all hypothalamus pituitary and ovary so all suppress hpo axis reduces gnrh and to that extent estradiol levels are also decreased so that is why it's a, it's a wonder drug so it has uh, all this function and it also has a direct inhibition act on the endometrial tissue i told you modulate matrix metalloproteinases that is what you remember that and there a uh, response a uh, paracrine response in ectopic endometrium is there it also demonstrate anti proliferative and even antigenic effects that is why it is one it is becoming one of our favorite drug and it can be given for long term use at studies up to 5 years are now available without any complications mpa metroxipan the oral i told it is usually given as im depo preparation so uh, only in patients were who are not planning for recent pregnancy because the resumption of ovulation takes time and it comes with a black box warning that uh, it can cause bone when the bmd losses and that loss is greater with increasing duration so you cannot give label recommends limiting the use of two years you cannot go every three months you can give injections but it not be given more than uh, more than two years lng ius delivers lng directly on the endometrium another favorite drug and this lng ius provides improved symptoms compared to expected management dmpa or gnr agonists it has equal and effective especially in post operative endometriosis many patients who doesn't require or who wants contraception along with the surgery we will prefer to i usually put lng ius on table itself so uh, uh, do a proper endometrial surgery and put lng ius on table for that it gives you and but uh, however it is been told that studies have told that ineffective for symptoms relief of bowel endometrial so remember this small point when you come to gnrh agonist continuous non pulsatile we all know from theory that only pulsatile secretion of gnrh produces estradiol so you have given the non pulsatile continuous gnrh that is what they form and it is a it creates something like a pseudo menopausal state it also has this cox2 level inhibition so cox2 level inhibition that is why it is it is considered to be very luprolite either you give 3.75 monthly dose or you can give 11.25 nafrolin also can be given 200 mg daily twice nasal spray can be given so as it was this osteoporosis risk and vasomotor symptoms are there uh, one thing you should all understand is that yeah you should have an add back therapy so daily progesterone or low dose Uh, you can give along with progesterone or you can give a low dose osipril can be given along with this if you start like this 
otherwise six months is the maximum you can continue more than six months so uh, what is the basic principle is that sufficient you don't you cannot give estrogen more you have to create that hypoestrogen state should be maintained that is the reason why uh, this uh, tissues are very sensitive some people say very sensitive endometrial tissue so the threshold should be kept below and it should not go more than 30 to 40 micrograms Antagon is another side direct suppression of gonadotropins or sex steroids. No initial flare of gonadotropins is there. RCTs have shown efficiency between allogolics and DMP are almost the same. It is very efficient. And low dose like 150 and high dose, why say 200 milligram twice daily. So this six month daily, if you six months you give, it significantly reduces dysmenorrhea and non-menstrual pelvic pain compared with the placebo. Sustained improvement in dysmenorrhea, non-muscle pelvic pain and dysmenorrhea in 12 months mark and greater effect with the high dose regime as but complications are there. Coming to aromatase inhibitors, another drug which, uh, uh, which letrozole and uh, we use day in and day out if you are practicing in fertility. So, estrogen may be produced locally through aromatization of circulating androgen. That is the principle. So, the advantage of it is whenever there is an implant outside, it is considered to be the best drug in can be, be given. So, when you, it has to be given in the long term. So, what you know is that uh, the ovarian cyst formation, always remember this. Large cysts may be formed on the other. So, you may have mistaken. You may think that the endometriosis cyst has grown large. So there, here also, you have to combine it with progesterone, CNC, or GNRS agonist to blunt this effect. That is the point which you have to remember. Then you have progesterone antagonist, receptor model. One is progesterone antagonist, that is mifepristone. Mifepristone, another drug we started using for now, uh, fibroids and endometriosis also can be used. It can, it has shown, studies have shown it, both pelvic pain and extent of endometriosis, but exposed to endometrial chronic adipose estrogen, endometrial hyperplasia, and the progesterone receptor moderator through the endometrial changes. Another drug is a uh, progesterone uh, receptor, selective progesterone receptor modulated, ulipristal, another drug. It has also the same effect about uh, PAEC uh, about that progesterone receptor modulator of those endometrial changes are then 40 to 80 percent uh, with the long term ulipristal. And uh, rare, but it has liver injury. That is the reason why it was taken out of the market and it is being coming back. It is being uh, coming back slowly. Into the Another drug which uh, availability is not confirmed, Basidoxifid. Uh, it's a third generation serum coupled with uh, equine estrogen. It has been given, indicated in postmenopause symptom and osteoporosis prevention. It has been used, but effective alone or with GNRH in can be given in endometriosis upper symptom. Raloxifen initially was tried but stopped because whenever raloxifen was stopped immediately the pel chronic pelvic pain comes back so it is found to be non-effective. This slide I, I will be skipping it androgen just for a sake. It is now not at all used. X-ray guidelines have told that not to use danosol if anything is available. So to, um, to be able to understand that this was used very frequently before because now because they, it causes hypoestrogenic hyperandrogenic. So the females are not ready to um, tolerate the androgenic side effects, so they, they are so it came out of the market. This is about gestrinone, also the same. It is also a good drug, but because of its this is this has an anti progesterone anti estrogenic, and androgenic side effects. So side effect, it has also been taken out. So let us come to uh, the practical part. See, uh, we want to remove the pain. Okay, it has to be a long term treatment. We have to need repeated course of treatment. And we know there is significant recurrence right after stopping treatment. So your benefits of one or the other is not good. So some principles you have to keep. See, you have to be in India, in our country. We have to see about the side effect and cause profile. We cannot give uh, diagnosis for so five years to a poor patient. So you have to see the cause profile also. Individualize the patient, patient wish. What you mean is that an adolescent patient wish to have regular periods. So how can you put a continuous occipital or a diagnosis to that patient? Tolerability, severity of disease, all this should be when you take it. Not that uh, you are you who are found of a drug doesn't mean that it should be the drug of choice. So response to a particular category of drug cycle suppression and adverse effects, targeted destruction of endometrial tissue has to be taken. So we have different types of you have empirical management, you have direct medical management, pre-op and post-op medical management we use. So coming to the uh, coming to the empirical treatment. See, if you take an in empirical treatment, mainly it's analgesic and COCs are the empirical see. 
if you are giving pain thinking that it's but not never give more than 3 to 6 months if it is not responding within 3 to 6 months you have to go for laparoscopy and confirm the problems of giving empirical response or does not always predict the presence of doesn't mean that the symptom goes it is endometriosis or not endometriosis and another problem is that it may delay the diagnosis of deep infiltrating endometriosis selection of drug long term i will tell you only important points if if it is a non pelvic and a continuous pain cyclic ossipel so uh, continuous pelvic pain non pelvic cyclic ossipel okay patient dyspnoeia is a complaint you go for continuous ossipel okay and estrogen you should remember that the estradiol component e2 is below activating the threshold for endometrial lesion that is why i would use in case of previous intervention can be used and even you can try for recurrence so post operative recurrence also ossipel can be given but uh, all of you remember minimum should be 24 months see you cannot give any guarantee to any patient saying that see three months you have given and do a scan and see that okay this is size has decreased and you have to minimum and you have to tell the patient and patient will have breakthrough bleeding means more breakthrough bleeding is there then skip for seven more days and uh, start the new cycle coming to progestogens like the uh, dinogest is there dinogest 2 mg per day i told you all these things which we know where dinogest is given post surgical recurrence and multiple pain symptoms are there dinogest is a very important drug it has an efficiency with gnrh here also breakthrough bleeding is minimal but you pursue the patient to take it for more than 3 months and it will they will have uh, the uh, response will be there then uh, gnrh agonist see uh, i have taken by practically asking many people and the studies which i have seen dyspareunia dyskesia patient dyspareunia dyskesia patient gnrh agonist uh, gives in a short term relief but whenever you are giving gnrh you have to add back therapy you have to use any any of the following drugs and duration of gnrh agonist should be 6 to 12 months actually so uh, you have to be very cautious of uh, bone mineral density a depo dmpa as i told you that same thing back through bleeding and bone mineral prolong cannot be given here where is the indication post hysterectomy patient with or uh, with the removal of the ovary or testicular disease we are suspecting it's a very cheap and it's a very good drug you can give it for 2 years then aromatase inhibitors as i told you whenever i told you in the implants that is what refractory cases and endometrial rectovaginal septum see it is not hard and fast rule please all of you listen i have tried to make it simple so that when you have an indication for a drug that is it uh, to then about cabergolin see not much is an experimental say now also long time but it is being started we had a pg doing a thesis also and one thing i understood from that there was a pain relief for the patient but there was no decrease in size of the endometrium as a whole so my experience is only a thesis for 6 months so danazol associate should not be used the old ashray criteria and new ashray criteria is the same and pre pre operative medical therapy for pain in no use actually pre operative there is no only indication if the patient is in a waiting period you can give that the only indication extra gender endometrial medical therapy is indicated if surgery is not with surgery 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 he is for so pre operatively a plan for a surgery there is no way then post operatively also you should now the nature's extra guidelines have included in the post operative a uh, treatment is included and they have specifically told that long term it should be given more than 6 months no proven benefit of giving before 6 months okay so there is no in, 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 and the patient requires like um, dysmenorrhea and contraception patient is having dysmenorrhea contraception then you can have lng is not planning for pregnancy it can be given so non pelvic pain and continuous pelvic pain post operatively dinogest will be a handy drug to use so uh, minimal and mild disease no pre or post op role for so no role for diagnosis no surgical clearance improves uh, live birth rates okay this will be dealt with i know that madam will be dealing but most of the time medical treatment is not you go for controlled ovarian stimulation as well as gonadotropins and iui gets you catagor and now coming to an adolescent see first line is ossipel don't tell nsaid first line is ossipel you can give nsaid as if ossipel cannot or patient is not ready to take ossipel then nsaid gnr diagnosis is more more than one year cannot be considered at all so uh, the progest ossipel and dinogest are the best drug this is a study which is being dinogest has 2 mg dinogest has been given we have side of study 52 weeks it was given and all and there was very decrease in bmd and all these things and it is a, so it is to show that the efficiency of this drug coming to last few slide in a postmenopausal uh, lady uh, consider 
consider surgical treatment whenever you are the problem the sir uh, was the ultrasound is very important see any perimenopausal postmenopausal lady please do a proper evaluation so if the mass is like work, work up many there are many incidences and um, from my, i had one case by many of my friends had cases where they had operated for endometriosis under full surgery they have done finally the report comes as serous uh, adeno carcinoma uh, or mucinous adeno carcinoma and you have messed up the whole case yeah so and uh, so please be that is what and if you are sure it is not you and you can consider an aromatase inhibitor in this case what about hrt see when you say hrt reactivation production of new lesion malignant all these things are there but hrt is being recommended but only uh, you can have a combined oc pill better to go for tibolon it starts immediately after surgical menopause means immediately you can start rather menopause after one year when to stop till if it's if you have operated till the age of natural menopause you can continue this is a new extra guidelines nothing much changes are there actually for the only important change is that the laparoscopy is no longer the diagnostic standard you don't need laparoscopy ultrasound imaging what sir was telling like if you are happy if you are uh, lucky to have like sir um, uh, it will be very nice that you do not need of any laparoscopy to diagnose when you are going laparoscopy is only surgical method and they have included gnrh antagonist as studies option they have been second line as included as a second line therapy but danosol anti progesterone all these things are removed from the recommendations all these are recommendations which i have told only so we will go to last uh, two three slides just to tell you that what is new in the kit see what we need now is a limited by a long term you see many of things are limited by long term you can have side effect of prolonged hypoestrogenism high rate of recurrence after discontinuing therapy interference of fertility cure safe and minimal side we should have something which is of that kind of so this is comes the theory of angiogenesis comes okay so the network of capillaries surrounding the lesion that angiogenesis is a crucial event and the most important is egf so based on this egf i'm not going to details all these drugs have come tnp4 tnostatin angiogenics all are anti egf and the dopamine receptor cabergolin acts as the same principle cunegolide all this acts as so one is a egf inhibitor drugs another is statin see all prostaglandins are synthesized from cholesterol that you all know so what is a statin the advantage is that it blocks the conversion conversion of 3 hydroxy 3 methyl glutaryl coenzyme a so it's a precursor of cholesterol so that is why it has an anti inflammatory anti angiogenic anti oxidant property they are all under study atrostatin simvastatin mevastatin lovastatin all these are under study another is the last is the tnf alpha blockers tnf alpha pro inflammatory cytokines Uh, see uh, these are increased level of endometriosis so this blockers that is why infliximab um, etanercept all these things are which reduces tnl alpha another is that path see this also the legend have inflammatory property gum so this is why uh, why rosiglitazone pioglitazone all under study then the last drug that is under study is the pendoxifilin so so many drugs are coming so in the future we don't have now we don't have uh, all these drugs will in the future we just to know that these drugs are coming this also has a tnf alpha blocking property uh, abhishek abhishek uh, can we have one or two cases just to tell or it have to stop abhishek hello yes sir abhishek can i have one or two case in one minute to tell or i i should stop time is over hello richa ma'am can you yeah, yeah you can go ahead so please uh, please only only two more minutes two more right. minutes Sorry, See, yeah. in my interesting case uh, all cases which i had in the last three months 17 year old girl comes with severe dyspnoea intermittent when she came she gave a history of laparoscopic endometrial cystectomy one year back imagine people are doing uh, the surgeries for very young girls i don't know but uh, correct or not i have not seen that patient at that time but i cannot comment on that but uh, preferably surgery should not be that is the one point in this and uh, done and they now she has bilateral cyst so surgery repeat laparoscopy has gone from my mind in this case the uh, the drug patient was supporting and uh, what was given for the uh, drug was uh, dinogest was given to the patient even oc pill i had a confusion between oc pill and dinogest but the patient could afford dinogest that is why and there was significant reduction in the lesion and pain next case was simple a 29 year old lady came with primary infertility three years duration she had no pain TVA showed she had a right sided endocyst and left side ovary normal AFC was normal AMH was normal seven per absolutely normal 
So uh, what is the best option she had? Uh, we directly went for controlled ovarian stimulation IUI and she became pregnant. So no need of preoperative or anything needed. She did not need to see. So the, the one word you should understand, infertility with endometriosis, if you are planning to go for infertility treatment, there is no role for medical treatment, either surgery or IVF. That's the treatment. That is the message that I wanted to give from that case. The next case, which I had 29 year old lady, seven years of duration, severe cyclical pain with menorrhagia. Her TVA showed 5 into 4 cent menosis on left side, 3 into 4. Here, the AMH was at the lower level, 2.4. It's okay. AFC was okay. She gave a previous history of laparoscopy cystectomy. So, once a laparoscopy was done, I didn't want to, even if it was, I didn't want to take the patient for laparoscopy, actually. But the patient wanted the pain versus the patient pain. And actually, patient was given depo metroxy gonadotropins. And after six months, patient was done IDF. Patient was actually directly advised. So in this case, if you are asked, uh, my management was, I don't say it was correct. But directly proceeding for IVF would have been a correct management in this case. Okay. Or you could have even controlled, try for three cycles of control over in simulation IUI. Okay. 31 year old girl, 10 years of primary severe endometriosis, laparoscopy twice in the past, comes for a fertility treatment. Now she has bilateral endosis pressures. This AMH is very low, AMC is low. There is no risk of aging. This was IVF followed by DIPO, GNRH, and three months after embryo transfer was done. Next case is last. Uh, here you can see, here the problem what happened, AMH was very low, patient has been operated twice. Now huge endometriosis cysts were there. Hydronephrosis was there, patient was suffering with pain. Patient wanted her baby. It's a very tricky situation we had. So I con consulted with my friend uh, Venu and what we did was that we did bilateral adnexomy and heterologous ART was done and, uh, and uh, she had a baby. And the last case is that this is a patient history of severe pelvic pain and dyspareunia, P2L2. He is bilateral fixed ovaries and patient showed uh, evidence of endometriosis with her. Uh, rectovaginal septum. See, patient is not ready for surgery. I was even ready to do a hysterectomy in this patient. Hysterectomy and salpintic bilateral oophorectomy, even to that extent, but patient was not ready. So, what to give? This is the only case where I have given anestrosol for six months and excellent results. So, uh, this is some of the points which I have caught from my cases. Thank you for the patient healing and thank you for giving me two more minutes uh, from extra. Thank you.